Hello and welcome to Star Diary, the podcast from the makers of BBC Sky at Night magazine. You can subscribe to the print edition of the magazine by visiting skyatnightmagazine.com or to our digital edition by visiting iTunes or Google Play. Greetings listeners and welcome to Star Diary, a weekly guide to the best things to see in the Northern Hemisphere's night sky. As we are based here in the UK, all times are in GMT. In this episode, we'll be covering the coming weeks from the 22nd to the 28th of January. I'm Ezzie Pearson, and I'm joined this week by Paul Manny. Hello, Ezzie. We're going to start in the evening sky again. That'll be nice, won't it? Yes, moving on to the evening sky. Fantastic. So what do we have to look forward to in this week's evening sky? Well, this week, the moon is heading towards full. So, you know, if you're deep sky observers sort of thing, sorry. Uh, but uh, if you get up in the morning, you know, you can see the morning sky that's dark at the moment uh, when the moon has set. But the late evening on the 24th, that's the night before the moon's full, on the late evening, look for the moon because it forms a lovely line with Castor and Pollux in Gemini. I like these lineups sort of thing because you, you look at the moon and you suddenly realize there's two stars pointing up straight from it. And this is what will happen on the late evening on the 24th, around about 10 in the evening uh, to be actually seeing that. Then on the 25th, the moon is full. It'll actually lie... Uh, only a few degrees away from um, the Beehive Cluster, Messier 44. Um, but the thing about it is that I think the moon will completely wash out the actual star cluster. If you use a telescope with a decent light grass, you might just pick out a few of the sprinkles there of the actual uh, cluster itself. But the moon will also lie above Gamma Cancri. So uh, it's actually just in the constellation of Cancer. And if you watch it over the course of, say, an hour or two, you will actually see the moon slowly move past the star itself as well. So uh, well worth having a look at. So even full moon, there are things to look out for. And of course, you've got the various sort of like uh, streaks across the surface, the ray features on the full moon, which are best seen at the full moon. It's interesting because we often used to say, I can remember many books would often say very, well, when I first started in astronomy, oh, well, the full moon's the worst time to look at the moon because you don't get this sort of contrast effect because you haven't really got the shadows as such. Nowadays, we say, hey, look out for the streaks, sort of the, the ray patterns from the various craters because they're really prominent at this particular angle as such. So there are things you can actually look out for as well. Now, moving on to January the 27th, we stick with the moon because it's, it's passing some prominent objects. And in this particular case, on the 27th, look around about nine o'clock and it's almost to the left of the star Regulus. And we've mentioned this a few times over the, the, the last few couple of weeks or such when it's happened. But the point about this is that it's a good guide to the fact that Regulus is not a lone star. It's not a lone star. It sounds like Western, doesn't it? But it's actually a double star. And it's got a fainter eighth magnitude companion. So it's well worth having a look at these because often, you know, these stars, they, they say a lot of the stars in the sky are actually double or multiple systems. That Our sun is a bit of an oddity being a single star. So, you know, when you look at Regulus, there is this faint eighth magnitude companion that goes with it. But whilst we're in this area as well, sort of thing, the moon is to the left of Regulus, but it's sort of to the lower right of Algeba. Algeba Gamma Leonis is a gorgeous double star. Two golden yellow stars next to each other, one slightly fainter than the other. So again, well worth having a look at these because they're not just single stars that often surprise you by putting a telescope on. You need a bit of magnification with Algeba. Regulus, you can see it in binoculars, its companion. But Algeba, you definitely need a telescope and you need to use more magnification to bring it up. But you will split them uh, quite readily as well. So they're quite a pretty pair. So you've got two doubles there and you've got the moon as well to enjoy at the same time. So quite a lot happening that particular night. Now, on the morning of the 27th and the 28th, we're back to Venus and Mercury. Yes, we've still got Mercury, but only just. It really is in the bright twilight. And the reason why we're saying this is that we like challenges. We've always liked putting challenges out, haven't we, Ezzy? And the thing about this challenge is that 
Mercury's deep in the bright twilight, but at the same time, Mars is now beginning to creep out of the solar glare, and Mars and Mercury are close to each other on the 27th and 28th. It'll really be a challenge because the twilight will be bright, and you've got to be careful you don't leave it too long before the sun rises. So we always say you've got to be very careful with that. But you'll catch what we would class as the inner planets, Venus, Mercury, and Mars, and we tend to think of Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury as the inner planets of the solar system, and you'll get a chance to see Venus, Mercury, and Mars. But as I say, Mercury and Mars will be deep in the twilight, so quite a challenge, but well worth getting if you can see them as such. So there we are. 27th and 28th, Mercury meets up with Mars as it begins to creep out of the solar glare, but just don't leave it too long. Uh, we just don't want you to lose your eyesight. Now, if you do get both of them, then the following evening, in fact, not just both of them, if you get all three, Venus, Mercury, and Mars, if you get all of them, that evening, if it's clear, you can catch the rest of the planets of the solar system. You can have all the planets in 24 hours. So you've got the outer giants, you've got Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, and Uranus as well. And if you want to be pedantic, you've got the horizon, so you've got the Earth as well. <laughs> so you've got all the major planets. I know, I remember there was a, a, an astronomy, uh, I won't mention a certain magazine's name, but uh, there was, they did a, comp they're, they're doing a typical picture. We do pictures of the world. They did a picture of the world, and it won, you know, somebody won a prize, pictures of the planets won, and then point, somebody pointed out, hang on, no, they've got more than that, because they've got the Earth in the view as well. So they won it again the next month. <laughs> oh, that was not fair. That was not fair. But it was a good point. The Earth was in the view. So you could see another planet as well. So there we are. You've got a chance to actually see all the planets if you can nab Mercury and Mars in that bright twilight. I mean, Venus, well, that's a given, isn't it? So if you've got clear skies, you'll get Venus. It's yeah. so bright. Venus, well, Venus and Jupiter are probably it? pretty easy. Saturn, also pretty easy. The rest of them, that requires a bit of work. But... I think exactly. it's worth it, because how often do you actually get to see all, well, I suppose eight planets, if you're including Earth, in one go, in one 24-hour exactly. window? I mean, Mercury's usually the awkward one, isn't it? Because it's the one that's usually playing hide-and-seek and deep in the twilight. Uh, so it's the timing, and as I say, just that happens that Mercury and Mars creep up together and uh, are close, but the caveat is the very low down. But, you know, I think it's worth trying for. There's always one that's hiding behind the sun. We can't all be playing nice <laughs> yeah. together. But it certainly sounds like there's a lot of interesting things to see in this week's Night Sky. So thank you for taking us through all of those, Paul. It's a pleasure. And if you want to keep up to date with all of the latest goings on in the Night Sky, do subscribe to the Star Diary podcast to keep up to date with all of the latest stargazing tips. But to go over this week's again, we start on the 24th of January, where the moon is going to be near the stars Castor and Pollux in Gemini. Then on the 25th, the moon will be full and it'll be next to the beehive cluster. Because it is full, it will probably wash out most of the cluster, but you might just be able to see a scattering of stars. Plus, you can also see the moon as it slowly moves past Gamma Cancery as well. On the 27th, the moon is going to be near the star Regulus. Regulus is a double star, so it's a good opportunity to not only find that star, but have a closer look at it with a pair of binoculars. See if you can see both parts of that double star system. And if you've got a taste for double stars, the star Algeba is also going to be nearby. That one you will require a telescope to be able to see, though. Then on the morning of the 27th and the 28th, Mercury is going to be deep in the bright twilight, but it's also going to be joined by Mars, with Venus also on display in the morning. So you can catch all of those three terrestrial planets at the same time. And then if you look again in the evening sky, you should also be able to see all four of the outer planets, the outer giant planets, giving you the opportunity to catch all of the major planets in the sky within one 24-hour period. So do be sure to take advantage of that as well. But thank you very much for joining us and we hope to see you all here next week. From all of us here at Star Diary Podcast, goodbye. If you want to find out even more spectacular sights that will be gracing the night sky this month, 
be sure to pick up a copy of BBC Sky at Night magazine, where we have a 16-page pull-out sky guide with a full overview of everything worth looking up for throughout the whole month. Whether you like to look at the moon, the planets or the deep sky, whether you use binoculars, telescopes or neither, our sky guide has got you covered with detailed star charts to help you track your way across the night sky. From all of us here at BBC Sky at Night magazine, goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Star Diary podcast from the makers of BBC Sky at Night magazine. For more of our podcasts, visit our website at skyatnightmagazine.com or head to Acast, iTunes or Spotify.